This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC. Hello, my name is Dr. Rob Page and welcome to Doc Talk. Doc Talk is a series of podcasts that is produced by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine that features its physician members uh, providing information to patients that is helpful in terms of making their health care decisions. And I feel very fortunate to have with me today Dr. Quinn Rahman. Uh, Dr. Rahman is a dermatologist here in Knoxville. Um, and I've worked with Dr. Rahman for many years, uh, but she's a dermatologist and a dermatopathologist, so similar to me. She looks at skin biopsies also at Knoxville Institute of Dermatology. Okay. So welcome. Thank you. And you are here today to talk about something that is very important in terms of our skin care, uh, and that is melanoma. That's right. So for, uh, we, we've, all, we've all heard about melanoma. We know that melanoma is a bad thing. We know that melanoma is a bad thing in terms of sun exposure. But what exactly is melanoma? So good question. Melanoma is one of the most common forms of skin cancer that we see. So we tend to think of three major forms of skin cancer, squamous cell skin cancer, basal cell skin cancer, and melanoma. And there are other ones, but those are the main three that uh, the public kind of tends to relate to. And melanoma is the skin cancer that is the most aggressive of the three. And so it's a skin cancer that stems from the pigment producing cells in the skin called melanocytes. And they go awry and they start to proliferate un in an uncontrolled manner and the cancer starts in the skin and it actually can spread to other organs and to lymph nodes. And, it's, uh, and, and to, to my knowledge, there are, um, other than surgery or prevention, there really aren't any good treatments uh, that exist for once it has spread. I mean, there, there are some, but maybe they're not so great. Yeah. That's right. There are some, definitely in the past five years or so, there have been more molecular-based treatments for melanoma that has spread uh, beyond the skin. Um, and that's something that we start to consider once the melanoma has spread to lymph nodes or to other organs. So there are some options, but it's best to detect it early and to treat it early. Now, um, now, what sort of patients are at risk for melanoma, and what and what types of behaviors or what um, what what risk factors would there be uh, for someone to develop melanoma? Yeah, so melanoma um, has a few risk factors, actually many, and we're discovering more of them every year with plenty of research. Um, one is genetics. So having a family history of melanoma, particularly in a first degree relative is gonna increase your risk of melanoma. The second major risk factor is UV exposure. And so that's both chronic ultraviolet exposure over a lifetime, but also intense acute sun exposure in the form of sunburns. Both can increase your risk of melanoma. Um, tanning bed use is a good example mm -hmm. of some things that we probably all have done uh, at some point in our lives um, that we shouldn't be doing. Um, you know, not wearing our sunscreen and wide, brim, wide brimmed hats, um, those things can really protect us against sun exposure. Um, those are the major risks. So, um, so, the, so the things that we should be concerned about as a patient is it's not necessarily a, a t disease that hits only old people or is, you know, common among young adults. It pretty much can hit at any age. Yes. Uh, more common in probably older adults. Um, but we should be concerned about it if we've had a lot of sun exposure mm -hmm. or if we have a family history, uh, father, mother, first degree relative, sister, brother, who's had a melanoma. That's right. So, so let's say that I'm a patient and I, I've had, uh, maybe I've had a lot of sun exposure um, and, or, and or I've got a first degree relative or someone I know, uh, someone in my family who's got melanoma. Um, what sort of things would I, should I be looking for? Should I screen myself? Should I go see a dermatologist? What sort of preventative care can I do uh, to see that to, to, to you know to ensure that I don't I don't develop melanoma and if I do I can have it treated? So one thing that you can do if you have a, a family history of melanoma, particularly in a first degree relative, you absolutely should have a dermatologist um, check your skin from head to toe to toe. We call it a total body skin exam, and it's really just a good thorough look from your scalp down to the tip of your toes 
everywhere in between. <laughs> um, and so we're looking for irregular, particularly brown, although melanoma can be pink, right. um, but usually an irregular brown spot. And if it looks atypical clinically, we would typically do a biopsy to make the diagnosis definitively. Um, so if you've had a first degree relative, you definitely need, with a melanoma, you definitely need to do that. And if you've had um, blistering sunburns, you should definitely have a good skin exam as well. If you have chronic sun exposure, if, you're, if you work outside, if you have hobbies that involve outdoor activities, um, have somebody come and take a look at your skin. And then based on what your skin looks like at that initial evaluation, usually your dermatologist will recommend um, you to follow up with some frequency. It may be once a year, it may be more frequently than that. So um, melanoma, we, 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 uh, you know, we, we commonly think about melanoma as occurring in areas that would have sun exposure, but they can really occur anywhere in your mm -hmm. body. And so you really need to have somebody who, who's going to, like a dermatologist, as you say, a total body check. Right. Because they can occur anywhere. And I mean, you know, anywhere. even, even mm -hmm. in your, even in your the areas that you don't look at too much mm -hmm. that you would look at. Uh, and the other important uh, thing that you mentioned is that they're not just pigmented lesions. Mm -hmm. um, these can look like pretty much anything. Um, yes. Yeah. Usually and, they're brown, black, um, variegated in color, um, irregular borders and margins, but they can also be pink. And right. those are the ones Because we think that... about the ABCDs, the one mm -hmm. thing that we always learn about, you were just mentioning most of those, the asymmetry, border, color, right. and the size of the lesion are all very important. So that's important for us to know about as patients, but uh, uh, in, in circumstances where we have significant risk factors, it is important for us to go to a dermatologist mm -hmm. and have these areas evaluated. Right. So um, I go to the dermatologist. Um, I've got a first degree relative. Um, you look me over. Um, what sort of testing do you typically do to know to know if we have a melanoma? Good question. So um, the first set of criteria that we have are the ABCDEs of melanoma that you that you mentioned. So we're looking for lesions that are asymmetrical, that's a bad sign, that have irregular B borders, that are irregular in color, C, that are diameter um, greater than the size of a pencil eraser, mm -hmm. which is about six millimeters. Although moles that have been present since childhood are gonna be larger than that, and right. that's okay. And then the final um, letter E is probably most important. It stands for evolution. And so if a patient comes in and a mole looks perfectly symmetrical with regular color and even borders, but if that patient says, this mole is new and it's changing, then it needs to be sampled. Gotcha. And so typically we look with our eyes first and many of us use a tool called, called a dermatoscope, which is a polarized light that has a magnifying glass on it. And it helps us to evaluate the pigment pattern of moles. Um, a little bit better than just with our eyes. And if we see irregular features with a dermatoscope as well, then typically we perform a biopsy, which is a sample removed from the skin so we can look under the microscope and make a definitive diagnosis. Gotcha. And, and, and so, uh, I, you know, I'm a patient, I've had a biopsy. Um, what sort of, uh, you know, and, 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 and I guess the, the thing that I'm looking for here is, um, why should we come see the dermatologist fairly often? You know, if we've had our skin evaluated, you know, we know things can change over time. Why is it important that we come see you on a regular basis? It's important because the d melanomas have been diagnosed in the past two decades with much greater frequency because of screening. And really many of those studies came out of Australia. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique population because the patients that live there have fair skin. They have blonde, red hair, blue eyes often, but they're really close to the equator and right. they get a lot of sun and they have a really high proportion of melanoma. And they really pioneered a lot of the trials that we have in treatment. And really they were the forerunners in, in terms of sun protection and sun safety. And a lot of what we do stems from what they do. And we know that if you can detect a melanoma early, that your prognosis is much better. So d the percent that your likelihood that you're going to survive this melanoma is much greater if we can get it early when it's thin before right. it starts to develop a nodule or a bump in it. Right. And, and, and the one thing that, that I know is that melanoma is one of the few cancers, first of all, that you can see mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of the cancers are developing interiorly, but they can be very small and still be fairly deadly. And so it just yeah. says, so catching them early when we see something change or when we go see our dermatologist and the dermatologist, and you generally will keep a record of these lesions over mm -hmm. time. So you have That's a good right. idea about where mm -hmm. things are. You've got a good historical record. Um, I know that the AAD a few years ago put out an ad that talked about 
uh, women versus men and being able to distinguish which yes. were and men are terrible mm -hmm. at it and women are very good yeah. <laughs> so so the take-home message is listen to your wife if your wife tells you you have something on you should have taken half that's right listen to your wife about it mm -hmm. um, so we so we've come in we've had a biopsy let's say that I've developed uh, that I have a melanoma mm -hmm. um, and it's very concerning to me you know the the, the term just melanoma means something mm -hmm. but you mentioned something important you said these these early melanomas are thin melanomas mm -hmm. uh, aren't as bad and so what sort of treatment would we get for like a thin melanoma? Mm -hmm. So when we make the diagnosis of a melanoma, this is what you do too, <laughs> mostly all day, you look under the microscope and you measure how deep the cells travel down into the skin and that determines part of, it's part of what determines your stage. And for an early stage melanoma, so stage one or two, the treatment is actually cutting it out. So we, you know, take a, a bit of skin around what is visible. We go all the way deep down into almost the muscle, just down into the fatty layer of the skin to remove a good bit of tissue to make sure that that melanoma is completely gone and the surrounding skin is normal um, before the lesion is sewed into a line. And that's the treatment is called a wide local excision. Gotcha. And, and, and so after wide local excision, um, so if, I, if I'm a patient and I have a history of melanoma, um, is there anything else important that I should do? I mean, should I get, you know, is this it important for me to continue my follow-up? Yes. I think that's one thing that, that's important for people to understand about having a melanoma. You've had a melanoma, you feel like you're cured, but is there something else I should do? Yes, good question. So patients that carry a diagnosis of melanoma for the first five years after that diagnosis, we watch them really closely. So anywhere between every three months, very early on, to every six months, because the chance of recurrence from that melanoma is greater in the first five years. And then usually, and a little, a little bit of this depends on the patient and the clinician as well, but patients are seen annually after that. So they have, for the rest of their lives, yeah. they have to check in with a skin exam every year. Uh, I, I, because I, my understanding is, is that once you've had one melanoma, you actually are at increased risk of developing a second That's one right. or a third one. And I'm sure you've had patients who've had multiple melanomas mm -hmm. over a period of years. Um, but fortunately, probably very thin ones because they're getting good, regular mm -hmm. uh, checkups from their dermatologist. Um, and so uh, so our, our take-home message here should be um, make sure we use preventative measures. Mm -hmm. Make sure if we have a first-degree relative, uh, we should come see a dermatologist mm -hmm. and get that check, get that full body check. Um, and if we see anything changing or our, our wives tell us we need to look at something, we need to listen to them um, and come into the dermatologist and have it evaluated by you and determine whether or not you think that, first of all, you think it could be melanoma, and if so, do a biopsy That's and then it. follow up in that regard. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, now your practice is here in, Na in uh, Knoxville, uh, Knoxville Institute of Dermatology. Right. Um, can you tell us um, about, about where your practice is located or if maybe a patient wants to get any more information about melanoma? Yeah. Would there be somewhere where they could find this information and somehow related to your clinic? That's right. So we are a practice um, located in Bearden in okay. Knoxville and we have a couple of other locations. We have clinics in Lenore City in Teleco Village and Jefferson City as well. So we serve a broad population. Our primary focus is medical dermatology. In our practice, we have um, two dermatopathology slash dermatologists and one skin cancer surgeon. So that's really our passion and our focus. Um, and we have a website, knoxvilleinstituteofdermatology.com, where you can find um, us there. And there's also great information on aad.org. Um, particularly with melanoma and research and, and prevention. So everyone should check that out. We're as interested well. in getting additional information. And, and we'll have the number down at the bottom of the screen if they want to contact you. Now, if I want to, if I want to make an appointment in, for Lenore City or Jefferson City, mm -hmm. can I just call one number and, and yes. make an appointment anywhere I need to? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was just saying that's very helpful to patients who are not necessarily proximate because they can get screening uh, any one of these locations by, you know, a board certified dermatologist and come in and have their lesions evaluated. Yeah. And knowing the Knoxville area and the greater Knoxville area, we have a lot of older people. And of course, mm -hmm. that's, a, again, another risk factor for it as well. Um, well, um, Dr. Ramon, thank you so much for joining me here today thank and giving us important you. information about a very important disease mm -hmm. um, and, base, and giving us information about where, what we need to do, uh, how we need to approach these lesions, and the importance, main, main take-home le uh, lesson is the importance of catching them early yes. and to come see a dermatologist. Yeah. And with that, that concludes this episode of Doc Talk. Uh, Doc Talk is a podcast that is produced by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine that features its physician members giving information to patients 
that are important in terms of making their health care decisions. I'm Dr. Rob Page, and thank you so much for joining us. This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC.